Hello class. Now this is our first chapter from the advanced engine technology. That is nothing but the introduction to advanced IC engine. Here I have projected a welcome slide in front of you. In the in the first image we can see there is a huge field uh, present over here, and in that huge field a windmill is located. So this will be the future of next to next generation. Uh, where they are, they are need to be rely on the renewable energy sources because day by day we are just uh, consuming the our non renewable energy sources and because of that the energy crisis will be the future not a present in those scenario the next to next generation have to rely on those renewable energy sources in the second image we can see there is a ultra low energy buildings are there ultra low energy consumption buildings. What, what is the requirement of those buildings? Why those buildings are uh, uh, so much, um, or why this those kind of building is needed in the future? Because as the population increases, the land consumption is uh, increases, the crop, the plant cutting is there. Okay, so due to that, uh, there is no options available for the next generation where to they have a farming. Okay, in those scenario, they the each building develop their 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 uh, their own crop they will develop their own crop in their house okay even though they develop a such a such a, a building in which they will require a minimum energy consumption means they will take advantage of sunlight they will take advantage of moonlight even in order to reduce their energy demand okay so this will be the future they will consume a ultra low energy in the current scenario we are not that much bother we are just using a energy without bothering about the next future scenario we are just using a two three light in one room without any requirement because we are not facing energy in a crisis in current days presently so we are not bother about that but if you see a future after the two generation or the one generation the scenario is completely different that i have uh, tried to present in front of you in the present slide and that is a need we have to make an advancement in ic engine even though i feel the ic engine is not will have that much good future because nowadays a uh, solar uh, whenever we are uh, even the nowadays we are try to convert our current IC engines into electric vehicle into hybrid vehicle so after the one generation or two generation I don't feel the IC engine is, is a thing which we can easily uh, available on road as as like a steam engine we are not at all using a steam engine in current days so IC engine will be the taking the position of the steam engine after the one to two generation so to 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 make a few, uh, our future better, okay, we have to make advancement. Otherwise, we will be a history. So that's why we should have advancement in our IC engine. Because if we are not change, if we are not modify our engine, then we will be a history for the next few generation. Okay, so that's why uh, advancement in IC engine is most important to to make our position in next generation also. Okay, so what are the causes they supposed to feel we will see in the next slide okay so the energy crisis so what is the energy crisis uh, by definition the energy crisis is any great bottleneck in the supply of energy resources to an economy they said any great bottleneck what is a bottleneck okay what is a bottleneck the bottleneck may be in terms of resources is very short and consumer consumer is too much okay this is the one kind of bottleneck means supply coming towards the consumer is very short and consumer standing in front of the seller are so many so the seller have their own opinion or seller have their own uh, uh, what we can say command to whom uh, he will sell okay so he will definitely demand a lot of money because resources is available and that resources is with that seller then he will demand a more money from uh, more money to consumer out of those uh, crowd so because of that the price will hike okay so any bottleneck in the in the field of energy supply is all about depend on a price rise or price hike okay 
so when resources is limited that time bottleneck is bottleneck will be formed in the terms of the price rise but sometime not if means in the current scenario we are not running with the limited resources we are not at all it is just a scenario created in front of us in the current generation we are not at all facing a limited resources issue okay in many news channels we, we are uh, noticing uh, so and so country are got a new energy source under their so and so land okay so currently we are just searching we are digging our lands in order to in order to search a new crude oil source we are searching in ocean in order to new oil source and we are succeed also so right now in the current generation we are not at all facing a real energy crisis okay so the energy crisis is the concern that the world's demand on the limited natural resources that are used to power industrial society and diminishing the demands rise so energy crisis is a thing or the situation created dramatically in front of the globe it is it is just a a time being what we are facing in current scenario now in the in this uh, current situation we have seen the price of petrol diesel is increases by 10 rupees okay previously it was of uh, we are getting a pet, uh, one liter petrol in 70 uh, 78 and 79 in that range and the current is we are buying a same one liter petrol with 88 to 89 rupees per liter so this is suddenly till 10 to 12 rupees rise is there it is just a scenario created by our our um, governing societies okay the who govern the root policies of selling and buying okay so they are creating the scenario but currently we are not at all facing the energy crisis so that is the thing how real is the energy crisis the best way to sum up the reality of energy crisis is that you cannot have growing demand on limited resources without eventually running out the resources. Means, one side we are saying we have a limited resources and another side we can observe the country like America, the country like China, the country like Japan, the country like Russia, they are enhancing their industry they are making more industrialization how can it possible if you are saying at one hand we are running with the short we are running with the lack of energy resource we are running with the low energy resources and on other another hand you are making a big big industry okay you are making a big uh, megawatt of uh, electricity plant power plant okay you are developing a big power plant from big thermal power plant you are developing so from which resources you are taking a fuel uh, for from which resources you are borrowing the uh, um, fuel for that power plant it is not possible if you are uh, telling uh, we have a less power uh, less resources of energy then we can develop a such infrastructure which is uh, depend on those resources okay so it is just a uh, this is not a thing we are facing a real energy crisis for the this generation and the next generation there is a enough amount of energy is energy resources available to survive okay so it is a not a real energy crisis i want to uh, i like to quote in front of you so the, it is a political and the business making strategy strategy by crude oil supplying and refining company okay it is a, all about business making strategy okay how the price will uh, how the price of the resources are are changes okay how it get impacted those causes we will see in the next next uh, so what study but it is just uh, just the sake of time you must uh, understand it is a, just a political and the business making strategy okay uh, that there are no real energy crisis if you are not concerned about life after you your your time on the earth is gone okay so if you think if you only bother about your time on the earth then you are no need to worry 
because you have a lots of energy resources to survive but if you think or bother about your next generation or if you bother about your grandsons grandsons okay then it is very difficult in that case you have to think because in the current generation and the next generation there is a resources there is a resources available for us in terms of the crude oil in terms of the natural gases in terms of the coal but if you think about your grandson's grandson then there is a a very dangerous scenario will become in front of them okay so i am not saying energy crisis is not there in future it is there in future okay so to become our future safe we have to make or we have to work from now only so that's why the advancement needs needed okay means on other hand i am saying real energy crisis is not real on other hand i am saying energy crisis is there but you must need to understand energy crisis is not we are facing presently whatever the bottle whatever the price hike we are facing it just due to a different region not due to a lack of resources available resources is there those price hike is not due to the vanishing resources resources is available there new resources we are also discovering discovering and it is discovered okay but those high price high it just due to a business making strategy and the political things or it is all about a na national budget it is just due to uh, those price high are just due to the national budget or balance balance of national budget it is not a fault of our politician it is they have to do this thing to manage a national budget okay we can't blame our uh, politicians because they have to handle a balance they have to balance our budget okay in that way they they uh, they will uh, act in that way they will act so it is not their uh, problem the scenario is like way to balance your uh, financial condition to balance your national financial financial condition you have to work hardly or you have to behave strictly uh, and you have to uh, raise a taxes okay so this is a thing uh, which on the national uh, national policy this those are national policies okay so don't uh, think about uh, energy crisis we are facing the current scenario current present day this will be a future not a current day okay so there is a very real energy crisis if you care about a future that the next generation will inherit okay so this is a thing the energy crisis is there but not now now let's talk about the pricing of fuel in india how pricing is take place how pricing of fuel are carried out in india okay so in india there are two type of taxes are applied on a fuel okay and i'm here i'm talking about the fuel only because our uh, scope of this subject is the ic engine so we will talk about the fuel only so the set, uh, the india in the indian government are applying a two the kind of the taxes on the fuel petrol gases or diesel all the gases that cng gas okay we are filling in your uh, automobiles those lpg gas we are filling in our uh, auto rickshaws okay uh, diesel fuel uh, and the petrol fuel all are having a two kind of taxes one tax is the central government tax and another tax is the state government tax okay the central and state government tax make up a nearly half of petrol pump price means if you buying a fuel for example petrol at 88 rupees per liter then 88 divided by 2 that is 44 rupees okay completely goes into the pocket of government okay in terms of tax in terms of the tax duty that 44 rupees get five get divided into two two kind of taxes those 44 rupees okay so out of that 44 rupees 
if you buying the fuel at 88 rupees per liter then 44 rupees is nothing but the petrol pump price the price quoted by petrol pump owner okay and the remaining 44 is nothing but the price you are paying in terms of tax to the government and that tax get again by forgetted or uh, get divided into two taxes one is the central government tax and another is a state government tax so out of that 44 rupees 24 to 26 percent is nothing but the central government tax and 20 to 25 percent is a state government tax so central government tax is ranges from 24 to 26 and state government tax ranges from 20 to 25 percent okay so as a result, approximately 51% of pump cost goes to the government. Here I'm here I told you, if you're buying the fuel at 88 rupees, then out of that 88 rupees, 44 rupees goes into government in terms of the tax. So 50 or approximately 51% of your petrol pump price, that is 88 rupees, are goes into the government pocket in terms of the tax okay so for example here again i'm uh, quoting one more example suppose in bangalore bangalore karnataka as of may 16 2011 price of petrol is 71 rupees okay per liter out of this 70 rupees go to the government of india in the form of ex excise and custom tax in the form of excise and custom tax and 16.63 rupees is collected by state government in the form of sales tax and the entry tax. So when you are making a summation of this, the 33.69 rupees, 39 uh, that is 33, 16 and 33 rupees, 16 and paisa will be collected as a, a tax out of this 71.09. So it is approximately 50 to 51 percent of our petrol pump cost okay again in this petrol pump cost two two three rupees is the margin of that petrol pump owner okay so petrol pump owner is just uh, having a benefit of one to two rupees max to max five rupees okay on uh, or behind one liter of fuel and government taking 33.69 rupees both combined state and central 33.69 rupees out of that 70.09 rupees okay so this is the pricing of fuel in india and this percentage are varies as per the national policy in order to balance the financial budget okay so this is a thing which or due to which a price of fuel are increasing in india if you compare a pakistan if you compare a dubai if you compare the other countries okay a price is vary a lot because on a national on international market a cost per barrel is fixed for all countries sri lanka also buying a fuel with the same barrel cost america also buying a fuel with the same barrel cost okay all country are buying a fuel with the same barrel cost from a club countries okay but whenever those fuel are entering into the those country border or whenever those fuel are crossing the border of respective country a taxes with taxes will be added on that goods okay and that we need to pay whenever we are buying that fuel for our benefit okay for our benefit so this is a thing why of in international uh, means where uh, even uh, international cost of uh, fuel is dropped then also why at country level a cost of fuel not dropping so this is the reason okay so i hope you will uh, you have understood the pricing of fuel in india if you feel any difficulty so please do comment in comment section thank you